hello in this video we will talk about the prolog list now in the previous video we talk about the how to how the prolog proof search and the backtracking works right now in this video let us try to concentrate on the like the theory part of the prolog list maybe in the next video we will see a live example of it so this particular video will be part of the prolog programming playlist so if you are aware about this one so this will be you will be finding this particular video over here somewhere after this how prolog proof search and backtracking works now to start with let us first get a very brief idea about what is a prolog list so as we know about any other programming language so a list is basically a collection of finite number of elements or items right so for prolog list also same stuff exist same concept exist over here so it's a finite list or finite collection of numbers or items over here we'll talk about those terms or items here very soon now why it is needed in prolog or any other programming language because it basically useful for grouping related items right or maybe basically dealing with large volume of related data over here we'll see certain examples as well in the next video and technically when we define a prolog list it's basically enclosed in square brackets and the items of the list are separated by comma it's a very simple structure and there is a concept called length of the list it is exist in other programming languages as well there is exist in prolog as well so length is nothing but the number of item currently we have in that particular list okay so that's the basic idea about the prolog list now let us take certain examples and try to understand what could it can contain so let's take a very simple example first if you see we have taken a very simple example of prolog list over here where each and every item if you see it over here it's all or nothing but atoms right we talked about atoms before in this particular playlist right so it's a very simple playlist where these atoms are separated by comma and we have kept them under square brackets we have defined them under square brackets let's take in another example so what would be the length of this particular list so if i just count it one two three four so that means the length of this particular list will be four over here we have four atoms in this particular list let's take example two let's take a, a bit complex example over here if you see like this particular guy is an atom over here this one is nothing but a complex term we talked about complex term before this x it's starting with a capital that means it's a variable two is a number and these two guys tom and sam are both are atoms over here if you see this is a very interesting one because a prolog list can contain all different kinds of terms together as well like it is not necessary that it always needs to contain a similar type or single type let's say if it is containing atom it all the elements has to be atoms no it can be a complex term it can be an atom variable as well in future we will see it can contain another list as well okay so if you see another interesting stuff this guy sam is the first element of this particular list right also this is guy sam is the last element of the list as well what i mean to say is a prolog list can contain the similar data the same data or same same term more than once as well okay so that is also a valid scenario for the prolog list and it will be counted as a separate element as well like if i just talk about the length of this particular list it should be 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so this is our example 2 so let's take another example over here which basically list under list so if you see sam is an atom this guy seed and pam is basically a list over here and this guy tom and male sam is also another list over here okay so this outer list basically the main list contains three elements one is atom and two other list over here so this is also a valid scenario for the prolog list as well so what will be the length of this particular list we have defined so it will be three right but if i just ask what will be the length of this inner list it will be two 
for this inner list also the length will be 2 over here so we learned a prolog list can contain another list as well now let's move on let's talk about a very important concept called empty list so empty list are defined as em like no elements within the square bracket that is how it is defined in prolog and if i just talk about like the characteristics of empty list as we said like it contains no elements and it's always have length zero at is as it is very much obvious over here right so this is so that means in a pro in prolog if a particular list contains no elements we will consider it as a empty list over here now let's take another example now with a very it looks like very complex one but it is very simple if you see it over here this is my actual list right because this of these two square brackets now it contains an empty list if you see it an atom a complex term variable another empty list number another a finite list correct with length of 2 and this is all this contains another list where the members are a number and another list if you see tom mill sam so we can have this kind of complex structure in the in the list as well and what could be the length of this particular list it will be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 correct which are comma separated in the main square bracket that's it that is how you need to consider it over here now let's move on let's talk about a very important concept called head and tail of the list this is needed because when we will be programmatically processing the prolog list we need to know how like what elements are there in that particular list right we need to extract those elements from the list for our purpose right in that case to understand this concept of head and tail of the list is important so if i just talk about a very simple term let's take this particular list over here the head of the list is the first element of the list so if i just extract the first element of the list so that will become my head and rest of the elements from uh, so my head is basically sam right for rest of the elements like this one this this three elements together so this is this will basically form another list so this will become my tail of the list and if you see so this is a list over here sid pam and tom so one thing is very much we need to notice over here is head is a single element it's not a list tail is apart from head if i just create another list if we just remove the head and create another list it will be my tail over here so tail is a list over here now with this concept now one thing we need to remember over here is this head and tail is only available for the non-empty list for empty list it is not available at all so prolog will return false over there okay so let's say this guy over here let's say we have a list with a single element a complex term mail seed so what will be the head of this particular list it will be mail seed if i just extract the first element from this list correct and what is the rest of the element of this particular list it's nothing but an empty list correct so my tail is a empty list over here as i said tail has to be a list over here right head is an term over here now let's move on let's talk about the operator which we are going to use to programmatically access head tail and other information okay so this is a very interesting operator called pipe operator now let's take an example something like this one if i just post a prolog query something like this one if you see in the left hand portion we have used two variables called head and tail and we have given a list over here correct so what prolog will do prolog will extract head as sam it will basically take this but assign this guy extract this guy and assign to this particular variable head as sam and for tail it will extract extract the rest of the part over here okay and then it will also return yes over here or true over here so one thing we need to notice is the pipe operator it's basically 
it is not only giving you the head and tail because in this scenario it is giving me head and tail it's basically dividing this particular list into two parts correct one part it is giving you the head currently another part it is giving you the tail right in next examples we will see more about this one this pipe operator some complex examples as well let's set this particular example what will be my head and tail of an empty list so if i just give head pipe tail of an empty list so as i said an empty list cannot have an head and tail that means pipe operator cannot divide it into two different list over here so prolog will give always give no or false over here okay let's take this example over here this is an interesting one because as i said the concept of pipe operator is to divide the list into two parts the first part it will extract elements and the second part it will give you a rest of the elements or list of the list of the elements there right so let's say instead of extracting the head portion i just wanted to extract the first two elements over here so how i will post a query to the prolog so i will basically define two variables with comma because these two are separated by comma right so first comma second then pipe rest so my first will be sam second will be sid and rest will be a list called pam and tom over here okay so this is how prolog will be returning me it's also written me true or yes okay now in this context it is very much needed to introduce another very interesting concept in prolog called anonymous variables now before we jump into anonymous variables let's take an example let's say we have a list a very simple list of this one over here and we wanted to extract second and fourth element of this particular list so how i will do it i can post a query something like this one because i want to extract second and fourth element right so that means it needs to be a separate element so i have to keep it the in the left hand portion of this pipe operator right because it is it will be giving me as a element over here then rest because rest will always give me as a list over here right so this will be my prolog output so x1 will be sam x2 will be sid x3 will be pam x4 will be tom rest will be pat over here now there is a problem if you see we just needed the x2 and x4 seed and tom as a output right but prolog also generated x1 x3 and rest as well which we do not want first of all we just wanted to generate the second and fourth element as a output so this is giving me more output which unnecessary which is unnecessary so what if i just want this x2 and x4 as a output and i do not care about what will be the rest of the variables or what will be the rest of the outputs okay now if you see there is another problem with this approach is let's say if i if i have my list with a huge amount of data in that case i have to choose separate variable names for each and every portion each and every position over here right because i cannot use the same variable name over here so that is another problem so how i will resolve that so for that the concept of anonymous variable comes into picture so let's say so prolog will also give me yes so let's say this the same problem if i just wanted to use a anonymous variable this will be the query i'll post to prolog so what i have done it over here if you see it every place is where i do not care about what will be my variable output and i want to suppress it as well i have just used a underscore so underscore is nothing but a anonymous variable over here if you see everywhere where i do not care about the output i just used a underscore over here even though each and every occurrences of the underscore will be treated separately internally but for us when we will be writing the code in prolog prompt for us we are actually using the same name so we overcome the second problem where we were using separate separate variable names for a longer list right so i can use just underscore over there second thing is 
we wanted to suppress the output as well because if instead of a anonymous variable we used a normal variable over here in that case like it will prolog will also produce the output for the particular variable right but in this case if i just see prolog will suppress the output of this guy then it will as we have used a normal variable for x2 for the second element it will output as sid it will suppress the third one as well because it's anonymous variable then it will produce x4 as tom over here then it will suppress the rest as well the the list which contains single element called pat as well because it is also an anonymous variable over here with the pipe operator right so we just generated the desired output we want so this is the beauty of the anonymous variable over here so it is not only used in list it can be used in other prolog queries as well okay so we understood how anonymous variable works it will also give me yes or true over here now let's take a very complex example something like this guy over here and i want to extract this particular element over here so how i will do it we will use anonymous variable something like this one if you see for the first six element 1 2 3 4 5 6 till this point i have just use a underscore over here that means it will prolog will automatically suppress its output it will take them we do not care about this outputs over here basically that's the concept behind the anonymous variable in a simplistic way now in this inner list i just want to extract the second element that's why for this list what i have done is i have just given another square bracket over here because i want to extract data from this particular list that's why i have used another pipe over here inside and i do not care about the first one that's why i have used a simple underscore over here i care about the second one that's why i have given a variable name variable name over here okay and then i have given another pipe to just ignore the rest of the parts that's why i have given a underscore over here so you have used two pipes over here if you see the outer pipe the red color pipe is actually used to divide the outer loop the main sorry i am not not loop the outer list over here and the inner pipe the green color pipe is actually used to process the data inside this inner list over here okay so the output will be x equals to sam over here and it will also output yes or true over here so hopefully you got a fair idea about what anonymous variables are and how to use them and how to process prolog list as well using the anonymous variables right and how to process this kind of complex li list as well In next video we'll talk about more about this prolog list we'll be probably we'll see certain examples as well so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video